I know. Good morning, and welcome to Hutton Baptist Church, um, the land of candy cane and fruits. This is awesome. I love this. Um, I'm going to back. I am like feeding back really bad here, so do you want me to stand further away? Okay. All right. Just make sure. So last, I'm going to retry this <clears throat> compared to last week when I messed everything up intensely, so... But first, I just want to say welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. Um, if you are a first-time visitor, um, we are so glad you're with us today. Um, just to remind you tonight, we have a play going on at 530. If you would like to come out and see that, that would be amazing. But if you are a first-time visitor, just fill out that welcome card that's in front of you in the pew. Um, and just fill that out. And if you could hand that to the pastor um, as you leave, or you can put it in the offering plate. It's just a way for us to get back to you and say thank you for being here. Um, at the church service and just being a part of Hunton Baptist Church. Those that are online each and every Sunday, again, thank you so much uh, for being a part of the church and what you do this way. I have a lot to go over with you. First, I'm just going to um, touch base and hopefully get these right for you. Is today's During today's worship service, there is no praise band. Uh, so anywhere where you see praise music, that doesn't exist. Except... <laughs> Except um, the first one under praise music is going to, we're going to do two hymns today. So, and we're going to be led in that. And then down below where it says praise music, open up the heavens, uh, that song we're not going to be doing today. So, now I'm going to turn over to the calendar of events just to kind of make sure you know some of them that are going on this week on page four. Um, this is another correction I need to make for you. It, during the church, uh, traditional worship service there will be no children's worship if you're staying after just so if you know that um, in the next two weeks or there will be excuse me there will be children's worship it says no children's worship but there will be the next two weeks um, there will not be children's worship in the second service and um, Wednesday or let me go back for tonight very important Christmas pageant here Candy Cane Lane as you can see so um, I could actually go hide behind through that door. It's actually really cool. Um, I think you're going to love it. Um, please come out tonight at 5.30. Be here a little early. Get your seat. Uh, get settled and be ready for the play. They've worked really hard on it. And I think you will absolutely truly enjoy this moment. Also, um, Wednesday is the memorial service for Heather Dean. Um, that is Amber Dean's sister. Um, we did Amber's funeral a little over a year ago here. And so um, that family's gone through a lot of heartbreak. And if you can come out and support them, that would be tremendous. On next Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Advent. That'll be our adult cantata for both services. Please make sure that you're here Sunday to hear them and hear what they have, the words that they'll be singing and bringing to you, the message. It'll be wonderful. And <clears throat> with that, there will be no evening activities next Sunday. Um, except for pastor's adult Bible study. That's all I have in my notes for you. What's that? No, I did not forget my Christmas party. That was not supposed to be in the bulletin. Yes, yes. So, no, I, I'll get that straight with the youth group. So, But that's a whole other story. But I just want to say, let God enter your heart today. Let Christ overwhelm you today. And know that this is a place that we come to worship our Savior and praise God. Let us worship him. We have a very special moment now. A couple of times each year, we pour a blessing over our Samantha dolls. And I'm going to ask Joan Lead if she'll come up here. And I'm going to take one of these little dolls. Let's see, I don't know. Kelly Page. That's who I have, Kelly Page. And Jenny. You have Jenny. <laughs> All right, I am going to turn this on. All right. Not Jane, let's see. Hold 
working? Very good. Oh, thank you. I'm going to give this to Joan, and she's going to tell you a little bit about Samantha Dolls for those of you who don't know about this ministry. Well, as you know, can you hear me? Oh, sir? Um, as you know, we have been making dolls for 17 years. We're in our 18th year. Um, and you may have, most of you probably know that as of this time, we cannot take them to MTV anymore. We've taken them down there for all these many years. The girl we've worked with has been so cooperative and we've never had a problem but she has a new manager, they have a new building coming up and everything is changing down there. And of course with COVID, we haven't been able to go, but we still were keeping on with the dolls and hoping that we would be, still be able to take them, but that has come to an end. So, but we're not quitting. We've got people who are enthusiastic and want to work and want to make the dolls and something is going to turn up that we're going to find places to take them. And it already has for these dolls that we have 21 dolls that we're dedicating today. And they are going to the Alpha House in Ashland at the, the memory care unit. People in nursing homes love them. We have taken them to members before that uh, of our church members. So um, uh, Margaret and Steve Potter are going up there and do their thing for Christmas. And he wondered if we could take the dolls. And I said, you find me a contact and I will see what I can do. So I called the lady and she said, we'd be glad to have them. So a few of us ladies are going at 810 next Friday morning. Yeah. I'm pray. not I'm not an early riser, so this is we'll hard. Pray for y'all. <laughs> they want to do it for breakfast <laughs> and have Santa come. So that's what we're going to do. And if anybody has any suggestions that they think that might work, it has if it's because of the um, religious symbol and we have Jesus loves you on the doll and that's not coming off. So um what it is, and it's going to, it'll be, it'll be all right. We're going to get it going, and something will turn up, I'm sure. I just know that when God says when done, one door shuts, another one opens, and it's going to happen. So when, <clears throat> if you have suggestions, please pass them on to me, and if you have a contact, that's even better, and we will um, see what we do next. But we're going to do it. We're going to keep on making dolls. All right. Thank you, Joan. And thank you, ladies, all of you involved with the Samantha Doll Ministry. It does mean so much. And we want to just have this special blessing now, including well, a any, Listen, oh, anybody oh, okay. that's here that works with dolls, please stand up. I'm not. Yeah, can't that's see right. You real well. Okay, that's one, two, three, one, two. Yeah. Okay. And these, these are basically new ladies, so. Um, well, we know they can wake up early, <laughs> so maybe. Very Eight good. Ten. <laughs> Eight ten. Eight ten. All right, there's uh, three three different prayers here. <laughs> Let's include all of that today. Okay, Heavenly Father, we come to you today, so grateful for your providing this ministry that this church can be involved with, and over all of these years, I'm so grateful to Joan and the host of women who work with her to make this possible. We thank you for the foundation, how this first began. We thank you for the faithfulness over the years. Lord, we ask, as Joan has mentioned today, that you would open that new door, that you would provide recipients. Today, we are grateful that the Alpha House Memory Care uh, residents will receive a doll Friday. And there may be others in this area, too. But Lord, show us where we need to be and go. And where these dolls, which bear the wonderful emblem of the reminder that Jesus does love each and every one of us. 
may you provide that opportunity for us very soon so that we can have that uh, purpose in mind as every stitch is sewn and every doll is stuffed and dressed and just treated like their, their own. Lord, we know that the recipients, Lord, will be blessed and we pray those of the family will also, as we saw down at the Children's Hospital of VCU Medical Center, Lord, today I would ask that you be with those who continue the ministry, bless them in every way, and may we continue to bear the name and not be ashamed of the name of your one and only Son, Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Let's sing some praises.
morning. This morning we're reading from Isaiah 29, verses 18 and 19. In the day the deaf will hear the words of the scroll, and out of the gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind will see. Once more the humble will rejoice in the Lord, and the needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for bringing us all here safely this morning. Thank you for the constant reminder of this season and help us to remember what this season is all about. Um, get us here safely and home safely today and back for the play tonight. In Christ's name I ask it, amen. Thank you, dear Perkins family, for sharing so well. Here we are on this third Sunday of Advent as we focus on joy. Sometimes it's hard to be joyful in the midst of sorrow. We do have a lot of things to be sorrowful about, but a lot of things to be happy about and joyful about too. And we'll talk more about that in God's message this morning. But I do want to take just a moment and uh, call to your attention some of those in special need for prayer right now. We want to remember Walter Jones. He's scheduled to have his kyphoplasty back uh, surgical procedure on Thursday of this week. Let's pray that will go exceedingly well for him. He needs some relief desperately from that pain. And then Mel Mozingo is still struggling with his vision. He's at home unable to drive. Let's pray for Mel and Jean and the aftermath of his stroke. We'll remember Dave Berlin, this is Gwen Holler's dad who got successfully through uh, heart valve surgery on Thursday, pray for his full recovery. Also we want to continue to remember Mary Hicks, this is the sister of Tommy and Rick Orange, and um, Mary went through uh, mastectomy this past week and is recovering, I think Tuesday, she's recovering uh, pretty well, but it's going to take some time because she has some other health issues that may impede full, uh, excuse me, uh, quick recovery. Let's pray for Leland Lale. This is Mark's dad. He got home from the hospital uh, uh, late Tuesday. Let's pray for him in the days ahead. And also Beth Waldron's daughter-in-law, Lee Robertson. She got through her surgery on Thursday at VCU Medical Center and is still there and will probably be there until tomorrow or Tuesday when hopefully she'll be discharged to go home. Let's pray for her full and uh, uh, complete recovery. We've got several who've been in our hospitals and rehab centers of late. Want to pray for them. Libby Gowen, still down at VCU Medical. Very likely, if things continue to go well, she'll go to sheltering arms for rehab beginning tomorrow, likely. Uh, thankfully, she got her biopsy done. The preliminary news is that it's not uh, cancerous. It uh, seems to be more of a mesh and uh, uh, con combination of that and some scar tissue that was causing the blockage or that has been causing the blockage with her bladder. And uh, we praise God for that report. And we pray that that will be confirmed when the full pathology report comes back. Also, Bill Robinson. Bill's been struggling of late, been in the hospital. He's still at St. Mary's, though he did, thankfully, the Friday night, he got to a step-down room, intermediate care, uh, room 440. Uh, still has uh, COVID, but he's doing some better with breathing. I was able to see him for a brief visit yesterday, and um, he was in pretty good spirits. So let's pray for Bill as he hopes to get back to Manor Care to be with Betty very soon. Charles Bridges, Mary Beth's a husband, let's pray for him as he's home now from sheltering arms, but has a ways to go. Uh, Janet Ford got home Thursday from Westport Rehab, and she sounded really good yesterday. Very happy to be home, and uh, still again has uh, some more progress to make, and wants to be back where she started before her fall. And then I want to mention um, Verna Pierce. Some of you know Verna. Remember her? Oh my goodness, you're talking about Samantha dolls? She loved to dress those dolls. She was the doll dresser. And she is 102 years old. Uh, her birthday in January, 
if she makes it, though doubtful, um, 103. And I say that because I spoke with her daughter-in-law yesterday, and um, she's in hospice care, not responding at all. And uh, I think it's just a matter of some, some time here that she'll be leaving this earth and being with the Lord. But uh, let's lift up uh, particularly the one we know so, be so much better, Jerry, the son, and has three other children, and then all the host of family. There are five generations. She is a great-great-grandmother a few times over. Uh, it's pretty amazing, really. But let's lift up uh, Verna Pierce and all those at Chestnut Grove and those with hospice care as well. And then I just want to mention again about the uh, passing of Margie Cordry. Uh, as you know, she, she passed away last Monday, and we are going to be having a, a service of remembrance tomorrow evening. Uh, there will be a time of visitation. It's a little uh, different. Uh, visitation will be from 6 until 8, and that will be at the Blyley's Funeral Home, Staples Mill Chapel. But at 6.15, we're going to stop and we're going to have a time of remembrance and memorial. Uh, Roger Collier will assist me in that. And after we're through with the brief service, we'll give an opportunity for people to share memories and thoughts and, and uh, other uh, things that may be on their minds and hearts. Uh, again, from 6 until 8 tomorrow evening, but the service to start at 6.15. Those are some of the more recent concerns. We have so many others, no doubt. But I'll ask you to join me as we lift up these to the Lord and pray for the remainder of our service today. Our Heavenly Father, Creator, Sustainer, Redeemer, the one who brings hope out of despair, light out of darkness, the one who has brought us here together as Courtney has so well prayed today. We're thankful for that. Lord, we ask that you help us to worship you and you alone. And may we keep our focus as the Holy Spirit works within us and among us today. For all of these we've named specifically, we ask blessings. We ask for peace, for hope, for assurance. Lord, we pray for medical care. We pray for healing and wholeness. And Lord, whether that healing come in the way of a physical healing or spiritual healing, Lord, we know that you are in charge. You've never lost control. Lord, may your will be done in every situation. Bless those especially who grieve at this hour. May they know of your presence with them. Continue to be with us as we worship you today, as we focus on the joy of our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We'll have our time of offertory as our ushers come forward. We want to give back to the Lord a portion of what He has bestowed upon us.
back a portion of what you have bestowed upon us. May every dollar be given to your kingdom's work. May it be used to glorify your name in this community, this state, this nation, this world. Lord, we pray that those who are serving us everywhere as missionaries will know that we're doing everything that we can to support them as well. Keep them out of harm's way. And Lord, bless us as we strive to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' humble name, the one who was born in a stable, the one who came with all humility and now is seated at your right hand, that name we pray in always.
Now it's time for children's worship. So those who have not been here, um, children's worship is a time when our second, uh, second grade and under can learn about Jesus and um, in a setting and have a worship service in their own way uh, for that age group. So um, kindergarten through second, if you want to follow me out the back doors, we'll take, go to children's worship now. Oh my goodness. That would be cruel. I would do it though. I would do it. All right, let me say this. This is a well documented statistic. Coffee drinkers. Got a few around here. I know real well. Did you know that if you were to replace your morning coffee with green tea, if, that's a big if, you would lose up to 87% of what little joy you have left in your life. <laughs> Speaking of joy, that's where we're heading this morning. For king and country, some of you are very familiar with that uh, Christian band. It started some 15 years ago as Joel and Luke, originally from Australia. Now, it is actually one of the most popular and sought-after groups in contemporary Christian music. Let's take a look and listen to Joy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's lead story once again is Megastorm Hercules. Yes, and though it seems to be settling over the entirety of the continental United States of America, there is some good news. It is that the is storm that. of the century. It has utterly paralyzed our nation. On a brighter note, uh, people are really... It's already claimed the dubious title of the worst Hero. of all time. Thank you for that, Nancy. Why don't we take a look at the weather? Lately I've been really watching the nightly news Don't seem to find the rhythm, just wanna sing the blues Feels like a song that never stops
joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. On a brighter note, while our circumstances haven't changed, I guess our perspective can. Right, Randy? Couldn't have said it better myself. This is Channel 13. Nancy Randy. Amen. Jesse, I believe you knew every word. I know that. I love it. As the Perkins family shared earlier, again, these words from Isaiah. In that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a book. And out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. As we come today, I want to share a text here, two verses. One of these, Paige used actually two weeks ago when he spoke on hope, because you see the scripture is filled with hope and peace and joy, and love. It all comes together. But here on that wonderful night, we read these words from Dr. Luke. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Quickly today, our three points. First being, life had its problems before and after Christ's first advent. His first coming, if you will. We still anticipate, don't we, that second advent. But life is full of problems for us today. One thing that is for sure, not everything will go well in our lives. But we are not alone. Times were difficult before Jesus was born, and they still are. Consider John the Baptist with me for just a moment. Where was he when Jesus began his public ministry? Well, he was in jail. Not the best place to be. In fact, as you read through Matthew's gospel, you will find the outcome of John's time in prison. No, he does not get set free. Nor does an angel visit him and walk him through the prison cell. No, John is beheaded. The forerunner of Jesus, this voice crying in the wilderness, he knew what he was called to do. He knew that Jesus must increase as he himself decreased. John obeyed the prophecy and the call of God to epitomize the ultimate acrostic for joy. J-O-Y. Jesus first, others second, yourself last. Are you living that acrostic in your life? 
It's the only way to experience true joy and meaning in life. With so much unhappiness today in this world, we need joy more than ever. As the video portrayed this morning, let joy move you. A church member was dying. No, it wasn't because of or during the sermon. The parishioner's parting words to his pastor were penetrating and pertinent. He simply said, whatever you do, don't miss the joy. That's a good word. Robert Louis Stevenson at Life's End said, to miss the joy is to miss everything. What are we as Christians to say to that? Are we really supposed to experience joy? Sometimes it would appear that we don't think so. In a Charlie Brown Christmas, if you recall that, Charlie Brown was having trouble getting into the Christmas spirit. So Linus said to him, Charlie Brown, you're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem. Unfortunately, some disciples of Jesus seem to have the same problem as Charlie Brown. A keen observer of Christians once said, Christians seem to have a religion that makes them miserable. They're like people with a headache. They don't want to get rid of their heads, but it hurts to keep them. So what do we do? I'll tell you what we do. We reflect on Jesus. Yes. Secondly, this morning, reflecting on Jesus brings joy. In our Advent reading this morning from Isaiah 29, we read and heard the assurance that the meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord. The shepherds of the first century were among the lowliest and meek of people. But oh, how they received the ultimate joy from the angel who came upon them in Luke chapter 2. He brought the announcement of a great joy. Jesus was born. The shepherds and all of those who worship Jesus were called to be a people of joy, and so are we. We are called to be a people of joy. You see, reflecting on Jesus brings joy. Reflecting Jesus brings joy. You got that? Reflecting on Jesus and reflecting Jesus in our lives brings joy. Brings joy to us and to others. How do you spell joy? Jesus first, others second, yourself last. There's no better formula or recipe for living the Christian life. Robert Dawson told about a lady who was looking out the windows on both sides of her plane as she flew to Cleveland. She noticed something that caught her attention. As she looked through the windows on one side of the plane, she saw a beautiful sunset that lit up the sky with brilliant colors. When she looked out the other side of the plane, she saw a dark, black, and rather ominous-looking cloud overtaking the horizon. As she looked back and forth between the different scenes, one beautiful and the other foreboding, she saw an object lesson for life in them. As we travel through life, we will experience our share of sorrows, storms, tragedy, fear, and stress. We will also experience moments of sheer beauty and joy. As we go through life, we can save ourselves some frustration and pain if we understand that the window we choose to look out as we journey through life affects what happens inside of us and how we feel about life. See, that plane was going to Cleveland. Now, I have no idea why. Why would anybody want to go to Cleveland? I'm just kidding. But Cleveland was the destination. Cleveland was set. It was sure. 
The same is true for us as believers. Our destination is set and secure. But as we travel to our destination, one that has been secured by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we have the choice of what we're going to look at along the way. The landscape. What is on the horizon? That may change and and change often. But the destination doesn't. No matter the view from our window, the destination remains the same. While what we face in life may change from sunsets to stormy seas, it does not affect the destination for, to which we are headed. While it does not affect the destination to which we're headed, it does affect our journey. Let's reflect on Jesus along the way. Reflecting on Jesus and reflecting Jesus brings joy. Finally this morning, to quote Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, the tendency for some is to be hypercritical during the holidays. Maybe you've fallen into this mode or trap. Someone comes up to you and what do they say? Happy holidays! And you can't feel but feel somewhat festered and it goes inside of you and you say no! And you stick your finger in their face. You mean Merry Christmas! (laughs) Or they may say something like, have a good season! And you pause and slowly turn and respond, Jesus is the reason for this season. Why do we do that? Like we need to defend Jesus. Hey, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Allow that joy to exude from your very being each and every day. People will know it. He will keep us strong and His joy will be a witness to all. During the advent of 1942, pastor and theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote a circular letter to some of his friends and former students. By the way, Bonhoeffer only lived to be age 39. Part of what he wrote read as follows. The joy of the Lord goes through the poverty of the manger and the agony of the cross. That is why it is invincible and irrefutable. It does not deny that anguish. It is there. But it finds God in the midst of it. In fact, precisely there. It does not deny grave sin, but finds forgiveness precisely in this way. It looks death straight in the eye, but it finds life precisely within it. We may lose our lives on earth. More than likely we will at some point. But we as believers can never lose our lives in eternity because our lives are not our own. They are found in Christ Jesus. You know, life has a way of sort of beating us down. But remember that when we are weak, He is strong. The joy of Jesus will strengthen us for the journey of life. In fact, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, pursues us each and every day. I believe that the Holy Spirit pursues the believer and the non-believer. Ted Kidd was his name. He was five years older than Janet, finished college before her, and started to work in a city hundreds of miles away from her. They always seemed to be at different places in their lives. But they had been, as best they could, dating for seven years. Every Valentine's Day, Ted proposed to her. 
Every Valentine's Day, Janet would say, no, not yet. Finally, when they both were living in Dallas, Texas, Ted sort of reached the end of his patience. He went out and he bought a ring. And he took Janet to a romantic restaurant and he was prepared to reinforce his proposal with the diamond. Another no would mean he had to get on with his life without her. After they had their salad, entree, and dessert, it was time. Ted summoned up the courage, knowing that Janet had a gift for him, however, he decided to wait. And so he asked, what did you bring me? She handed him a box that was about the size of a book. He opened the package and slowly peeled away the tissue paper. It was a cross stitch that Janet had made. And it simply said, yes. 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 Yes, it's the word of God. That's the word that God in his tireless pursuit of the sinner longs to hear. And it is the word that God desires to hear voiced from those believers who are weary and tired. Those who perhaps have even lost the joy of Jesus. He wants you to get that joy back and say, yes, Lord, I want it back. Give that joy of Jesus back to me. The joy of the Lord is our salvation and our strength. Joy to the Lord. Joy to the Lord. And joy to the world. For He has come. Let us pray. Father, today as we consider putting Jesus first, others second, and ourselves last, that's not to demean ourselves by any mean, but rather it is to lift you up and to serve you by serving others. You first loved us, and so may we put you first in our lives. May others see Jesus in us and that joy that comes with him. We thank you, Father, that no matter what's going on in life, no matter what the newscasters are saying, that we can have that joy. Nobody's going to steal our joy. May that be our mantra. May that be our desire not only on Advent Sunday, but throughout the year. Thank you, God, for giving us the ultimate joy, the salvation, the grace that is found only in your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. As we close out our service this morning, it may be that there's a decision that has come your way, you're feeling that um, God is calling you to make something known. It might be a decision to come forward as I stand here at the front today. I've got a little room to stand. Come forward and express something that's on your heart, on your mind, a desire. Maybe it's to request membership here at Hunton Baptist Church. We would love that. We would love to welcome you based on your own statement of faith, perhaps transferring a membership from elsewhere. Perhaps you want to come today and say, I want to be a person of joy. I don't know. I've lost it somehow, somewhere along the way. Help me to get it back, Lord, and we'll pray for you. Perhaps... Salvation has never come to your soul. And it's only because you haven't said yes. 
God's waiting for you just to say yes. Oh, he's done the work. He's gone to the cross. He's done everything necessary. Jesus died once for all. And so today, perhaps, is the day to say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to be a believer in Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be a part of his fellowship of believers. I want to go forward in faith. I want to be baptized in his name. Whatever that decision is today, you make it known as we stand and sing together. for just a moment before we head out today I want to ask Barbara if she'll come right here and stand next to me so everybody can see you this is Barbara Albertson some of you know Barbara some of you don't but Barbara has been faithfully here with us for probably 18 19 20 months now and she has been a member of the joy Sunday school class which Elaine Broach has been a big part of teaching along of course with Dolores Bryant and she has just thoroughly enjoyed her time here and has made that decision to join with us officially here at Hunton Baptist Church. And we're real excited for that and look forward to being with her in this way as we go forward in the days, months, and years that lie ahead. And Barbara comes today. She'd like to come, been affiliated with uh, num numerous churches and members, member of such churches. But actually today, uh, the kind of renewed commitment she comes upon her statement of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ having received him and having been blessed by him baptized in his name she comes today on that in that way so if you will join me in welcoming Barbara let's just say those words Merry Christmas and welcome Barbara Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and welcome Barbara yeah that's good we'll make that official at the January business meeting but as far as I know you're in <laughs> If, if, if anybody opposes that, I'll have a word or two with them, okay? I'm going to ask that she join me back here, and maybe you want to speak to her if you have a moment before you head to Sunday school today and welcome her officially. Let's, uh, let's have our benediction, and you'll walk with me here. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for our time that we could be here together and worship you. May our days ahead be those that will be about raising your holy name, lifting you up, sharing your word with all and your witness wherever we go. May the Holy Spirit be our guide and may we trust in you in and for all things that you will provide as only you can. Bless us through the day and through this evening too. Bless the children, the youth, and all the leaders. May this be a totally wonderful day dedicated to you, the Lord's day in Jesus' name. Our joy, we pray. Amen.